So here's Pong's first template for the table. The measurements are very slightly out, as you can see on the left hand side there, it's um, against the corner, but coming out slightly in the bottom left hand side. So we're going to straighten that off here. Once we're happy that we've got the shape right, then we know what we need to do in the way of teak. The really good news though is that we can get this in and out of the cockpit easily, which means he can finish the teak table down below and then bring it up. Obviously it's not going to be that height, we'll work out the height uh, later. He's just concentrating on the tabletop at the moment. Yeah, so the uh, Un's modelling how it's going to look when we're sitting at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little bit uh, too big at the moment, so just moving it very slightly. 50 mil or so. Yeah. We'll get the tabletop right and then we can worry about the post with the machine shop, but uh, at least Pong now knows that he's nearly there. That's the coffee table. And that's the main saloon table. The coffee table will fit underneath the saloon table so that we can choose to have the small table that's at ankle height or we can have a full size table. Now these are made of plywood but they will be covered with teak, 8 mil teak. And to, to make them of solid teak would have been too difficult, it just wouldn't be strong enough. Hence the ply board to give them that strength. Pong has cut out and routed corners for the tables. These are in pure teak. So when you look at the tables, they will appear to be solid teak with these lovely rounded corners. And between the corners, there will be a covering of teak as well along the side. Pong's rounded corners are now safely in place and he's cut the side pieces to fit exactly between the two of them. Just sanding off there at the end for the perfect fit. And that looks pretty good to me. Pong is like a train. No matter what goes on around him, he just keeps going and he's been working on the table and the coffee table all day. Look at that, he's uh, got the surround in there, that teak surround, which we're going to fill in with solid teak. Pong is refining the coffee table and the main saloon table. He's been sanding and measuring the rims which were applied earlier. That's the coffee table. And here the saloon table, which has had the refining finished, is now being filled with teak. So these teak planks have been cut to size and glued and they're now underneath a considerable weight holding them down in place as the glue goes off and settles properly. Here's Dang, the varnish master, in one of his outdoor offices. He is now going round the coffee table, as you can 
see just smoothing and sanding back that first layer of varnish. In front is the dining table. You can see a little better in this light. Just come round. And as you can see that lovely grain that we want to bring out. That's the underside of the coffee table and you'll see that we've used the laminate that, th that we used in the kitchen, in the galley. The other piece of floor, the final bit of floor which has been taken up is uh, where Tui is now sitting. One has got that. And the job Tui is doing is making this rounded area here ready to receive its piece of veneer. The carpenters have been getting to grips with the final piece of work to be done on the, on the engine. As you can see here, he had to curve the corner and then he had to put the veneer over the top. So there was quite a bit of preparation involved, but the veneer is finally on, went on this morning. Um, once again, it's had to go vertical because you can't curve the um, horizontal veneer without cracking it. I think it looks great. The curve is good. And now Tong Jan and Deng, our varnishers, can get on with uh, varnishing this whole area. Last week the battery box, which sits at the bottom of the companionway ladder, had some rather evil looking corners. So the carpenters have smoothed the top, taken the corners off and put some vertical veneer on there, ready for the varnishers. So it took a while to decide what to cover the engine cover in. We were going to use veneer but we felt that it would get damaged. We are going to use white ball mica but we felt that looked too cheap. And in the end, we've used the same cover, the same laminate that we used in the galley so it all ties in nicely together. This is just thin laminate on top of the existing plyboard. Uh, but the effect is great, it all works really nicely together so I'm really happy with that. The varnishes have been hard at work on the solid wood um, down below in the saloon and in the galley. If you remember Jamie and I started this earlier in the, in the project, we were painting it white, sanding it off and then varnishing it. We didn't find it a particularly easy job and some of the results were a little patchy. It also was just not possible with the amount of work that was going on around us for us to continue. So, for all those reasons, we passed it on to varnishers who have, yesterday, started work on it. So first of all they um, sanded it right back and then they put a little bit of uh, white paint on it and now they've started sanding the white paint back. Underneath there's the veneer which has had several layers of varnish on it and above is the wood which has been painted and sanded, not yet varnished. Um, I think the, the match is pretty good, it's easier to see here, it's a pretty good match. At the moment the carpenters are not working in the cabin so Tong Jan is spending her time adding layers of varnish to all the veneer in the cabin at the back here. They have to work out quite carefully who's working where so that each of them can get on with their jobs. And this is her place at the moment. Strips of veneer have been cut by the carpenters. They'll use these to line the lockers. Here's one that's already been done by Tui. You can see the lining here. And as well as the lockers, the doors. So he's applied a lining round here, an edging of veneer. Joy of joy, the electricians are here. Dean is getting on with finishing the power supply and uh, ensuring that all the wires and cables are in place for our phenomenal new lighting system. Sombat has instructed the carpenters to put the doors on. 
He just wants to make sure that everything's going to fit properly and to work out how and where we place all the instruments. We'll be following exactly what Jamie has told us to do in his diagram. Sombat and I have been through all the boxes, taken everything out, looked at the measurements of the cables and he's now put them into groups ready to take onto the boat. I'm hoping today we're going to start placing exactly where everything will go. I'll then take photos and make notes, send that information to Jamie and then press the button to go ahead. We're gradually putting in place all the B&G equipment. Once we're absolutely fine with where we want it, Sombat will start the cabling. Now this is going to give you a good idea of what the cockpit will look like. Sombat has brought over to the boat all the B&G equipment. He's following meticulously Jamie's instructions on where it should all be placed. This way we'll find out if it really will work and also if we have sufficient cable. The painters have left the building. The deck is finished. All the areas that we might walk on have been covered in vinyl. All the glossy areas are on show. And she looks fantastic. So now the deck's been painted and we're about to start work on a ceiling below. These troughs, for want of a better word, I don't really know how to describe them, but they're the surrounds that uh, hang underneath our deck hatches, are filthy and old. There's nothing wrong with them. So Moo and Lex are going to sand, clean, prepare, and then they're going to paint them. They're going to paint them snow white, just like the deck, so that they'll look nice and sparkling and won't let everything else down. Nobody knows exactly how this broke. I have a feeling it's something to do with Goy's team, but, um, it broke here, very simple to mend, according to Un. It will be glassed, epoxied, back together, sanded, fitted to make sure that it is the right fit, and then resprayed, and then put back in our cabin. So originally we decided we were going to leave the hatch surrounds inside the boat and work on them inside, but changed our minds, it's much yeah. easier bring them outside. Oh look, Moo is just showing me. He's made a corner there for that broken piece. Put it back Moo. Yeah. Just make it, make yeah. it and cast here. Just not any mold. Oh it's a mold. So that's the mold. So yep. he's going to make that. Okay. Just uh, make, make, make it die. Oh. Yeah when it dries it comes out and it goes in there. So that's made out of uh, microfiber, biaxial and epoxy. So that will mend that bit. There are a few cracks in them, so it's a good thing they took them out, although I'm not sure if the cracks were there before they took them out, but anyway. They've been sanding them back, cleaning them off, smoothing them out. So here are the surrounds, or the troughs as I call them, for our hatches. This is what we see from the inside of the boat. Uh, they've, been sand they've been mended, filled, and now they're being sanded. And at the moment I have to say that they are beautifully smooth. So we've had biaxial, there's been high build. A little bit more sanding. Undercoat. And then paint. We're about halfway through. And that corner there is the corner that Moo's team rebuilt. Just having a peek through the painter's tent here at the hatch troughs which have had their final coat on now. 
you'd never know that they originally had cracks everywhere, a broken corner. They look as good as new. So the hull is now finished. Well it's finished until we put the anti-foul on, so it's finished for the time being. Hello, you come along to have a look as well? Hello. See you then. So this is how the hull looks now that it's had all the treatment to it. It's all finished. Five layers of jetomastic on there. The next thing we have to do along here is just mask off the top sides and then we're going to cover the whole thing we're going to put uh, vinyl around it so that it doesn't get marked or scuffed because we're going to be here for a few more weeks yet the rubbing strakes now are being masked off and being prepared because we need to add a piece of teak and then put back the stainless steel rod. So here's what the rubbing straight looks like at the moment. Um, it's attached perfectly well to the top sides, but the very outside bit, which holds the stainless steel rod, was removed because it had, was falling apart. So now we're going to replace that outside bit with a piece of teak and then the rod will go back in and once that's done, a job for the carpenters, then we'll be ready to move the pads up. Kong has finished shaping and cutting out all the pieces of teak required to finish off the rubbing straight. He's checked that all of those channels are the right size. So we are now just waiting for the stainless steel to come back. And the next phase will be to apply this last piece of wood onto our rubbing straight.